If you're new to rocketry, I can almost guarantee that at some point you may have underestimated the importance of ground systems. After all, the things that you build for the rocket on the ground don't exactly end up flying, so they can maybe seem less important, but I can promise you, if these are not done correctly, your rocket isn't gonna fly. And the ground systems only gets more complicated if you're dealing with hybrids or liquid rockets. And that's exactly what we're doing here at Astra. Our new rocket Phoenix, which is gonna be launching at Uroc, is a hybrid rocket, which is powered by nitrous oxide. So she certainly has a bit of a complicated ground system. So if you're an aspiring rocketeer and you're interested in getting into hybrid or liquid rockets, then you're probably gonna to wanna to check out what we're doing on our ground system. Phoenix is a hybrid rocket, which is gonna be using nitrous oxide as our oxidizer. And this of course is a fluid, so it needs to be loaded into the tank. That's the main problem that we kind of have to solve with our whole ground system equipment. It may seem simple, but don't underestimate the complexity of this. Well, how hard can it be? Don't say that! Nitrous oxide is a typical fluid which comes in bottles that you can just buy. We happen to buy the 37.5 kilogram version, which is pretty much the biggest you can buy. The features on the bottle are pretty typical. You have, of course, the cylinder, and then you have a valve at the top, which you can use to exhaust nitrous oxide. And this is where the initial complication begins. Of course, you could just use that valve and put your bottle beside your rocket, hook up a line and open up the valve, and then boom, you're filling nitrous oxide into your tank. I mean, how hard is that? There's actually a small complication, which is that if you do that, all you're gonna get is gaseous nitrous oxide into your tank. The problem with that being that, well, nitrous oxide exists in two phases inside of the nitrous oxide bottle. It's both a liquid and a gas. And if you just open up the valve at the top, you're just gonna get the gas coming into the tank and the liquid is just gonna stay in the bottle. So if you actually want to fill liquid nitrous oxide into your rocket tank, which in most cases is what you want, you actually have to flip the bottle around. This way the liquid will be at the bottom where the valve is, and then the gas at the top will push the nitrous oxide through the valve, the liquid stuff anyway, into your tank. If you ever tried to stand up a bottle on its head, uh, you'll notice this is actually quite difficult and potentially dangerous. Not a great plan. So you're gonna need some sort of apparatus to allow the nitrous oxide bottle to be flipped. And to this end, we have designed this fancy looking contraption, which will be able to flip the nitrous oxide bottle, making sure that our valve is pointing downwards and then we can get liquid moving into our tank. It's a fairly simple contraption. It consists of a base, two columns, and then a rotor which sits on those columns and is able to be rotated. The bottle of course will sit in that rotor and when you flip it around, you'll be effectively flipping the bottle around. And as long as you lock it in place, you then have a perfectly functioning flipping station, which can allow you to load the nitrous oxide the way you want. In order to make this contraption a reality, we decided to go with using steel profiles. This keeps the whole design pretty cheap because it only takes about 200 euros worth of steel and you have all the material you need to make this happen. It's just a lot of work because of course you have to cut all of that material, you have to drill all of the holes, and then you have to actually weld everything together. But of course we're a student group so we have a lot of time and not a lot of money. So this is of course the option that we pursued. Now if you've seen some of our welding projects in the past, you may be a little skeptical of our ability to actually weld together this contraption effectively but we've decided to upgrade our equipment and our skills in this regard. We managed to find an actually really professional big welding machine, which actually worked really great for this whole job. And at this point, we've had a little bit of practice, so our skills are starting to shine a little bit better. Of course, we're still beginners, so things aren't gonna be perfect, but in the end, it ended up looking pretty much the way that we wanted. And if you're looking to build a ground system for nitrous oxide, I would highly recommend getting an assembly kind of like this because it makes working with those nitrous oxide bottles so much easier. The big advantage of using this type of system is that you can actually load the nitrous oxide bottle in the horizontal position. This is really helpful because those nitrous oxide bottles actually are about 100 kilograms when they're full, so they're a little bit unwieldy to be moving around. Once you've loaded it, you can lift it with four people onto the rotor mount columns, and then after that, it's all pretty self-explanatory. So if you're looking to work with nitrous oxide in a very safe and controlled way, this is a really good idea and it doesn't cost that much to actually make. In the end, you pay a couple hundred euros for the steel and that's pretty much it. Damn good deal. But of course, that's not the whole story. Now that you have this slip station, obviously you need to actually be able to control how you're gonna be filling the nitrous oxide into the flight tank. So you're gonna need some valves. 
Astra's plan with Phoenix is to have the flight tank pressurized to 70 bar. So our plan is to have a nitrous oxide filling valve, which will be opened. Once this happens, the pressure inside of the nitrous oxide bottle will of course push the liquid into our flight tank. This will take some time, but eventually the bottle and the tank will equalize in pressure. And at this point, usually the flight tank is around 40 to 50 bar of pressure. Our plan is to operate at 70 bar, so that's not quite going to cut it. You could wait around for a little bit for the nitrous oxide to heat back up. The whole process of the nitrous oxide filling into the flight tank actually cools it down a lot. So you have to wait for it to heat back up if you want to have the pressures in, you know, the 50 to 60 bar range. Sometimes this could take quite a long time and you kind of don't want to be waiting around for this when you're just on the launch rail because you could have a very short launch window or there could be, you know, other things, other factors at the launch site that could affect whether you're able to launch or not. And you kind of want to be able to launch right away. Come on, let's go, baby. Come on. So in order to actually pressurize our system, instead of waiting around for the nitrous oxide to pressurize itself, we have a nitrogen pressurization system. So we actually have a parallel hydraulic pathway where we can fill nitrogen into our tank. So once we're done with the whole filling process with nitrous oxide, we just have to open the nitrogen valve and then we can pressurize all the way up to 70 bar. This allows us to have fast and easy operations for our launch. And it's definitely a good thing to think about if you're working with a hybrid system with nitrous oxide. So those are the two valves that the ground system has to operate on the ground. But there's actually two other valves that you have to think about that are actually on the tank. The first one is the purge valve, which is at the top of the tank. This is important for the nitrous oxide filling process because as you fill the nitrous oxide into the flight tank, you're gonna hit an equilibrium point pretty quickly between the bottle and the flight tank. This is mainly because as you fill that liquid nitrous oxide into the flight tank, some of it's gonna gasify and then it's gonna start getting compressed and essentially you're gonna reach an equilibrium pretty quickly. Usually this equilibrium will happen before you reach the level that you wanna reach. So in order to help reduce the pressure in the flight tank so you can keep the pressure difference between the bottle and the flight tank, you have to open the purge valve that lets out gas, the flight tank gets less pressurized, and now you have, again, a pressure difference which allows the bottle to push more liquid nitrous oxide into your tank. This valve is not strictly necessary, but it definitely makes for a quality of life improvement when you're dealing with a nitrous oxide system. The last valve that we have to deal with is the exhaust valve, which is actually at the bottom of the nitrous oxide tank. If you're in a situation where you wanna get rid of all your nitrous oxide very quickly, maybe the launch has been aborted, you obviously don't want to use the purge valve to get rid of the nitrous oxide because it just purges off gas. So it would take a really long time for all of your nitrous oxide to gasify and be let out of the purge valve. So not really a good idea to use for emergencies. You also don't want to use your main valve, the one that you open when you start the rocket, because obviously in that situation you would have nitrous oxide going into your combustion chamber where there's fuel and probably igniters Maybe not the best idea. So it's a good idea to have this fourth valve, which is at the bottom of the nitrous oxide tank, which can be opened and it will just exhaust all of the liquid nitrous oxide out of the tank relatively quickly. It's great to have these valves in your setup, but of course you don't want to have like a guy running down and opening and closing them during the filling process. You really don't want to have people near the tank at all because the tank is, well, at least in our case, it's self-made. So <laughs> although we have pressure tested it, there's still, you know, general safety things that you should follow. After all, it's not a rated tank that's like safe to operate around. So you need to be able to operate all these valves remotely. And to that end, we've created a remote control station which will operate all these valves and some other functions of our ground system. And to explain a bit more about how that works, I give you to our ground systems lead. So over here we have lots of switches which we can control the uh, different valves with. Like we have one for uh, nitrous or uh, nitrogen, and uh, for many different other things. Uh, you have a live view of what's currently on in the uh, filling station. Also, it will be used for uh, igniting the rocket in the end. So we can select our two different igniters there. And after the safety switch is turned on, then the uh, button is live, which you can see by the green light under it. And uh, as soon as that's pressed, uh, you see the progress with white lights, basically how far we are in the firing progress. Wait, what? Yeah, it's a real thing. You can see if it's now, it should reset in like a few seconds. And then you see like this third will turn on as soon as the igniters are turned on. 
That third will turn on as soon as the main valve is turned on. And uh, that third will turn on as soon as the uh, main valve has turned off again. So when we are finished with the whole hot fire. Uh, this is our quick disconnect mechanism for our oxidizer filling lane for all the rocket. Uh, the problem is that uh, the rocket has to be filled and for that we need, need a hose connected to our tank. That hose has to be disconnected. Uh, there's a quick disconnect fitting on that hose. You can kind of imagine like on your garden hose just with 470 bar and uh, therefore out of metal. Um, that hose has to be pulled from it, like there's a ring on the hose that has to be pulled and that has been a quite a big problem of other rocket teams at UROC because a lot of the times this specific mechanism fails and therefore we wanted to have a lot of redundancy on that mechanism which is why we designed this. Um, basically we have uh, two different ways of operating that pulley mechanism. For once we have uh, this winch uh, with a geared down motor which can pull the uh, on the cable that is connected to that wing on with a force of like 150 kilograms. Um, so if that for some reason fails or isn't enough, we have uh, two dropping weights. That was actually the thing that we used last year at UOC. Uh, basically a servo that pulls out a pin, as you can see here. Uh, so it's actually it pulls out a pin and then a weight can drop. And through that dropping weight, uh, the cable is attached to the dropping weight. It will go through here and to the quick disconnect fitting and as soon as the length of the cable is reached it will yank on the cable with this sudden impulse and that will hopefully imitate the uh, you, the force of a guy just pulling on it. So that was very successful last year but I think uh, we have this now two times not only one so we have also redundancy on that if like one of the cable catches somewhere or one of the servo pins doesn't work. The interface with the wing that's sitting on the hose is also quite interesting. We have a small steel plate uh, that interfaces with the wing that is in encased in a 3D print basically and we can attach up to six wires to it so you can always pull evenly on it like when you can see here we, we can always uh, yank on it evenly uh, so in, in the end it will be like that. Uh, we can pull on it evenly so you can get it clean off without any like weird angles and therefore clamping forces. We were able to test out this quick disconnect method a couple of times during our propulsion test. Unfortunately, only once on camera, so this is the only example that we have. But we're pretty happy with the results of the overall quick disconnect assembly. We can now be quite confident that this will work during the launch. With the ground system finished, Astra is now ready for the long awaited hot fire. So be sure to stay tuned to see the results of that. If you learned something during this video, be sure to give it a like. And remember, to expand your horizons.